Hi, and welcome to Gardening in the North. We're located in Ontario, Canada, growing zone 5B. We have three and a half acres here on the property and we've designated 2,000 square feet to our garden. So we have broken that garden up into three. We have our hilltop garden, our raised bed garden, and then we have 250 feet around the pool fence where we have placed a lot of our uh, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, and those type of perennial plants that really will provide us food for years to come. I want to thank you for joining us in this gardening journey as we stumble along the way and learn with you, maybe teach you something, maybe we learn something as well. Thank you. So we're in the hilltop garden right now. Behind me, you'll see that I have our onion patch. So there's approximately uh, 400 onions planted there. And I just wanted to show you how I determine if the onion is ready to be harvest. Um, and that by all means does not include the times where you need to run it to your garden to grab an onion, to throw in with your roast, your chicken, whatever you're gonna do. Um, I'm talking about, you know, you wanna do something with them and you wanna make sure that you're picking the ones that can be picked so that the rest of them can continue to grow. So come with me. Okay, so here you'll see that a lot of my onions have already um, fallen over and that's because they're soft neck. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they're ready to be picked. It just means that they're not the type of onion that would stand straight up um, until they're ready to harvest. So one of the ways that I figure out whether or not an onion can be picked, let me see here, is I feel the inside and so if I feel like it is fairly thin and not much meat to it, then I pull it. So let me see here. And here's another one. And let me see. Oh, that's a good one. So I'll continue to pull them and bring you right back. So this is how much I harvest. Pretty good, considering it didn't really make a dent in my 400 onion, um, onion patch. So we're gonna take these inside. We're gonna slice them up thin. We're gonna place them onto the trays of my food dehydrator. Probably about 12 hours later, I'll be able to um, blend them in my Vitamix and have onion powder for the winter season. Come with me. Hey guys, so it's the next day. I had great intentions on bringing up my onions into the kitchen, slicing them up and dehydrating them so that I could show you today how to blend them into onion powder. However, as I was coming up the yard, um, family arrived. I guess I lost track of time when I was in the garden and had to postpone it till today. Needless to say, uh, I was up until about 1.30 uh, in the morning, so I think it's going to be a coffee day. So let's get started. I'm going to start slicing the onions up. I um, uh, took off the outer layer of the onion already. Um, if anyone has cut up onions before, they know that you get to the third onion and you're in tears. So I tried to limit the amount of time that I'm doing that. Okay, let's get started. on YouTube. I'm good. <laughs> so that's my son Brady behind me making pizza for lunch. cut up the whole bowl of onions and when I'm done I'm going to show you how I'm going to layer them on my uh, dehydrating trays and um, we'll go from there. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back guys. 
So we actually cut up about 30 onions. This is what we have here. I have a helper today. It's my son, Wesley. He's gonna help me layer the, the trays for the Excalibur nine tray dehydrator. Um, and so this is what they look like. They just come with um, the plastic tray and the thin um, silicone sheet here. Um, I just wanna show you also how thin I've done them. So they're like that. Some of them are a little bit thinner. Okay, so Wesley, why don't you wash your hands? And while you're washing your hands, I just wanna show our friends um, this jar of sun-dried tomatoes that I did. And so I'm gonna do some more of these and um, show you how I got them. But isn't that pretty? Okay. All right, so Wesley, yep. we're going to layer them. You're just basically gonna grab some and they don't have to be single layer. You're just gonna grab them and kind of spread them out um, because they're all gonna dehydrate and we are gonna dehydrate them in the dehydrator for, uh, I'm gonna start it off at about uh, six to eight hours. Keep checking on them because maybe it'll be done closer to the six hour mark and you just wanna make sure that you're putting them on the edges. And I'm gonna do it at um, about 125 to 130 on the temperature there. Okay, so once you have one done, you're just going to do the next one. Perfect. And then once we're done, we're going to slide these into the dehydrator. And depending on how long it takes, we'll determine whether or not we blend them today or tomorrow morning. So depending on when that happens will be uh, when we actually post the video. Are you okay? Yeah. It's very strong. So anyone who's ever pulled fresh onions from the garden, um, they are so much stronger than the ones that you buy in the store. So we have opened up all the, the windows um, because we were, a few minutes ago, we were all dying in here. Okay, so I think a uh, tip of the trade for next time will be put a fan behind us so that it pushes the, the airflow out. So we're just, okay, so, just so you guys know, we did about 30 onions. I've layered two trays. Wesley has one tray. I'm actually going to take a little bit from all of them. Because we have the extra trays, I'd rather just thin out the trays a little bit um, because that may help us in you know dehydrating time so that it's not so long. Um, I would really rather do it tonight um, because I have to work in the morning. So let's do this. Okay, so I think I've lost my partner to uh, crying eyes over there. All right, so uh, we're going to put these in the dehydrator and when they're done, we'll bring you back. Hi guys. Okay, so it's the next day and the onions are all dried. Uh, I have to tell you that it took much longer to dry the onions than I anticipated. And I think that might have something to do with the fact that I had pulled them that day um, and really they sat in my kitchen. Um, they didn't get a chance to really dry out. So I think lesson learned for me for next time is that I will probably pull the onions um, and then leave them in the garden for a couple days. I'll make sure the weather forecast isn't calling for rain. Um, uh, the way I have my garden set up, it's covered in wood chips, so I could easily have just laid them out there for a few days for them to dry out, and that probably would have saved me a little bit of time on the drying side. Um, but they're all dried now, so what I thought I would do is, this is the bowl that I had originally cut all the onions into, and I thought it would be kind of cool, you know, to kind of show you the difference once they're dehydrated, how much it fills up the bowl. So if you remember um, from two days ago um, that the bowl was basically up to here filled with sliced onions. Um, so let's fill it up and see how it goes. So this here is my dehydrator. It is the Excalibur uh, nine tray dehydrator, but you could use any dehydrator. It doesn't have to be this one. Um, it's whatever you have. You can also dry them in the oven. I personally haven't done that, but I know that you can do that if you keep 
your oven, I think it's at about 150. And so not everyone's oven will go down to 150, but if yours does and you don't have a dehydrator, then that's a good method of, of drying them. So we'll just pull these out. And so I'm just gonna bring them over and let you see how they look. So I had this tray fairly filled and um, it almost looks like nothing once you dehydrate them. And so the great thing about these trays is that these are silicone and so everything just kind of like falls off of them so it's awesome so we'll just do this one and so i have to tell you guys that i just had a gardening lesson. Um, I decided that I was going to grow a new variety of tomato this year, which is called the Old German. And I have a feeling from pictures that I've seen that the Old German is very similar to the striped German. Now, if I'm not right on that, please leave comments below, let me know. Um, but I was able to grow six plants. I've really been watching them. I've been, you know, anticipating having a tomato sandwich with this new tomato that I've never tried before. And so on Saturday, when our family was over, I was walking through the garden with my sister and brother-in-law, and I specifically pointed out this tomato that was probably going to be the biggest tomato I've ever grown, and it was one of my old Germans. And so if I show you this tomato here, the tomato that was on the vine was probably four times the size of this, and I was so proud of it. I actually reached down, it was probably about, I don't know, about an inch off of the wood chips because it was so heavy. And I reached down and I actually held it in my hand and I said out loud, I should pull this off of here. It's blushing. It would probably ripen up in the window um, probably in two days and I was kind of thinking that because I was kind of afraid to leave it there. Um, I normally would leave tomatoes on the vine until they ripen right up because I know the flavor is so much better um, but because of my fear of something happening to it I wanted to take it. So I reached down, I held it in my hand, I kind of twisted and realized that um, if I had pulled it off, I probably would have damaged the plant. So I thought I'll come back with scissors or some, some kind of cutting mechanism and, and cut it off and, and not harm the plant. Well, I forgot. So just before getting ready to do this segment of the video, I ran out to the garden. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna cut this tomato off. I'm gonna show you guys how big it is. And to my horror, it had been, half of it had been eaten and it was covered in bugs. And so this little guy here was right beside it, almost kind of like if it was kind of like sitting on it a little bit. And, and I thought I better pull this guy and put him in the window because I don't want to lose him either. So lesson learned, um, when you have a thought in your head <laughs> to do something because you have some kind of fear of something going wrong and you really want that fruit, um, just do it run back out with the scissors, cut it. Anyways, that's my lesson that I learned today. Don't procrastinate. Okay, so this is actually much more than I thought it was gonna be. When I was pulling the trays out um, and kind of looking to see if they were ready, I thought, oh my God, this isn't very much at all. So I was, I was actually a little bit disappointed, to be honest, but, um, that's not bad. That's really not bad. And so I want you to listen to the crunch of it. Just so you can see how much I dehydrated it. Now I will tell you, I was trying them um, and I had, I can't believe the flavor that is in these. Um, it is like having a ripe onion, um, the same flavor that you would get, that strong um, onion taste. This is going to be amazing. Okay, so I am going to use my Vitamix. Again, 
you can use whatever you have. I happen to have this, so this is what I'm going to use. Um, if you have a food processor or um, something else that suits you better, please use that. You don't have to run out and buy something like this. I just happen to have this. Um, so this is what I'm going to use. Fingers crossed it works. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to put everything in. Okay. So I should be able to get it done in two batches, I think. So put that in there. I am going to grab this little thing. Okay. And... Okay, you have to see this. <gasps> Look at that. It's amazing. Oh, awesome. So one thing I am going to do once it's ready, I'm actually going to fill this jar here. Um, and I'm going to use one of these leak-proof storage lids. Um, I don't know if you've seen them before or not, but it's awesome. So they just spin right on. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I have some moisture absorbers. So they're very little. They'll just fit right into the lid. Um, so if there is any moisture from the onions, I mean, I don't think there should be, um, then it's in the lid. It's not sitting in my product. Just spin it on, turn it off. I can leave a link below. I got them on Amazon. Um, they're really little, but um, yeah. So that's it. Thank you for sharing. Hey guys, so I blended all of the onion powder and I really just wanted to show you the final product. Um, as a hockey mom, of course I use hockey tape with a marker to put on it. It rips off real easy. Um, and I really wanted to show you what I do in the lid. So I just wanna show you that. I've just put a little bit of hockey tape in there and then um, I stick one of these dry dries on it and um, seems to work. Uh, I've blended up greens before um, and it has stayed in the cover for months and months and seems to be working. All right, well, thanks for sharing.